Just over 200 days ago, an aggressive Russia launched an all-out invasion of Ukraine, clearly anticipating a Taliban-style lightning takeover of the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv. That swift success did not materialize, and the Ukrainians are now recovering all that Russia had taken over. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky stated in a video address that the country's armed forces had reclaimed around 2,000 square kilometers of land since the counter-offensive began in early September. Zelensky's chief of staff, Andriy Yermak, got a little tongue-in-cheek in his Twitter post saying the Russian army is rushing to get famous as the fastest army in the world. It leaps and bounds to achieve the honorary title. Keep running. Today, I'm going to talk about why Russia will lose this war. Stick around until the end of this video to find out why Russia is using helicopters to capture its own troops. No war is fought without weapons. In this war, Western weapons are making all the difference. The Ukrainians had a lot to fight for in their motherland, but they had little to fight with. It was a David against Goliath fight until Western nations started providing Ukraine with NATO standard weapons. Ukraine is already using modern Western weaponry to deadly effect, attacking hundreds of Russian targets with the US-supplied HIMARS rocket system alone. Howitzers, switchblade drones, rocket launchers, anti-aircraft, and anti-armor systems are a few more weapons and weapon systems that also docked from the US and Europe. The United States has promised $15.2 billion in equipment, including Javelin anti-tank missiles, artillery, and ammunition compatible with NATO weapons. Other Western nations are mobilizing their weapon manufacturers to increase output and restore stocks depleted by supplying Ukraine. The battle is expected to go on for months, according to US Secretary of State Antony Blinken and NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, and the West must be prepared to help Ukraine through what might be a brutal winter. Speaking of brutal things, sanctions have affected Russia in an awfully negative way. Russia has been battered by the storm of economic sanctions imposed by the West since February. Russia has been sanctioned more than 9,200 times since February 22nd, according to the compliance screening platform Castellum AI, making it the world's most sanctioned country. Apart from economic penalties, international corporations that do business in and with Russia have since withdrawn. Russia's economy has survived thanks to oil and gas exports, but its military force is crumbling. A desperate Russia is reportedly attempting to acquire millions of missiles and artillery rounds from North Korea, which clearly means that sanctions are driving Moscow to seek support from the country's smaller, poorer neighbor. According to US government officials, Russia is also buying weaponry from nations such as Iran and Sudan. Most notably, Russia's capacity to manufacture technologically advanced weaponry is projected to deteriorate further as sanctions restrict imports. A study of Russian equipment captured or destroyed on Ukrainian battlefields discovered 450 foreign-made components in 27 Russian crucial weapons systems, including drones, missiles, and communications equipment. By the way, do you enjoy content about investing in global economics? Then consider giving it a like and hit the subscribe button. It really helps me to grow the channel so I can bring you the best stories about money, business, and the global economy. Sanctions are obviously an external factor that has massively damaged Russia, but there are some internal factors, like Putin's overconfidence, which has caused chaos from within. Russian President Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine, expecting minimal opposition. His plan to overrun Ukraine and seize major towns, including Kyiv, did not account for robust resistance from Ukrainians or extraordinary Western backing for the smaller nation. Putin's initial arrogance has cost him he's had to rethink his entire battle strategy several times. Bloomberg colonist Leonid Bershidsky wrote, no plans were made for pessimistic scenarios, and none seem to exist today. In a war, the side that isn't prepared for setbacks can come apart at the first signs of trouble. Overconfidence and panic are opposite sides of the same coin. Bershidsky further added, Russians went in without the will to win, but they were also not primed for the risk of losing. Any setback then becomes a catastrophic blow to national pride. This will rankle even if Russia manages to halt Ukraine's current momentum. These factors could be the ingredients of a historic defeat. But another ingredient of a defeat could be strategic mistakes. Russia has used the military troops of Luhansk and Donetsk as cannon fodder since their retreat from Kyiv and northern Ukraine in April. By doing so, Russia lost the only soldiers who are actually determined to win, 
These guys were anti-Ukrainian by definition, and fought as ferociously as Ukrainians. Russian soldiers lack the commitment, and when they were ultimately called in to replace the troops from Luhansk and Donetsk, they surrendered without a fight as Ukraine pushed back. According to Michael Kaufman, head of Russia studies at CNA, a Washington-based think tank, another factor for Russia's underperformance is a lack of investment in personnel. As Russia gathered troops for the invasion, estimates for the size of the force were based on a count of so-called battalion tactical groups, also known as BTGs, maneuverable units with their own artillery, air defense, logistics, and about 50 tanks and armored vehicles, each of which was assumed to include 700 to 900 troops. This suggested a 150,000 strong invading army. However, according to Kaufman, the typical BTG had only 600 personnel or fewer, and the whole force may have contained as few as 90,000 regular Russian forces. This brings us to mercenaries versus committed fighters. To keep the conflict going, Russia had to depend on the shady mercenary outfit Wagner. Putin also urged West Asian soldiers to join the military effort, many of whom had previously fought alongside Russia against the Islamic State. While Russia's invasion relied primarily on contract soldiers and outsourced volunteers, Ukraine's force was almost exclusively made up of nationalist fighters protecting their homeland. Analysts believe this made a significant influence on the ground. War fatigue is another thing that separates both nations, and it could be detrimental in this war. French researcher Bruno Tatre of the Foundation for Strategic Research recently said that the chances of Russian military fatigue are much higher than Ukrainian military fatigue. This is primarily because Ukraine is fighting to protect its land against all obstacles, whilst Russian forces are just carrying out orders from the Kremlin. Ben Barry, a senior fellow at the International Institute for Strategic Studies, has said that Moscow may be nearing a tipping point a point at which an offensive runs out of supplies or sustains so many casualties that it can't be sustained. Ukraine has claimed that Russia is using helicopters to capture its own troops who have abandoned their positions in Ukraine. If confirmed, the claim paints a pretty bleak picture of the situation on the ground where battle-weary Russian forces have been fighting for months. According to a UK intelligence report, Russian troops are experiencing morale and discipline issues due to the combat fatigue and low pay. All these factors highlight Russia's underperformance on the ground, depleting any will to win. By the end of summer 2022, Putin's Russia is the main loser of those six months of conflict in Ukraine, and not only because Moscow is delaying against an opponent who is incomparably weaker on paper, but also because its defeat has a geopolitical cost. Moscow has become overly reliant on Beijing. Russia gradually became China's subordinate partner over time. It's now in debt. In fact, Russia's actually defaulted its foreign currency sovereign debt for the first time since 1918. So for the last few months of 2022, one lesson stands out even more evidently. Military power has limits, most notably when the amount of troops and weaponry is insufficient to separate the quality and determination of men. Russia's not only not progressing, but it's also risking sending the Earth back in time through a nuclear mishap. Do you think Russia will eventually back up? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to watch our previous video about how Russia's entire economy is about to collapse. And don't forget to click that subscribe button. I make videos like this every week where I uncover the secrets of money and business.